Welcome to another episode of Behind the Studs, your home improvement and remodeling podcast, where the two most entertaining guys discuss the do's and don'ts in home construction and in the remodeling industry. Remember that you can nail it, paint it, or just tune into the show. How about that? Uh, here are your hosts, Colin Shaw and Jimmy Driscoll. Hey, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Behind the Studs. Hello, Jim. Hello there. How are you, sir? Excuse me. Oops, I'm burping. Thank oh, you. That's great. Really? Thank you very much. We have a guest today, and that's how I'm you're going to start off? Oh, well, God. At least it doesn't stink. Yeah. yeah. So we had a nice little nor'easter up here. Nor'easter. Yeah. So yeah. we're here in Connecticut. Yeah, a little wicked, wicked snowstorm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wicked nor'easter. Yeah. Did you plow? Um, I, I have a snowblower. But you don't plow. I don't plow. Right. No. That's plow? too much work. No. That's too yeah, much work. Plow I don't no? plow either. No. No, because then you got to go Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> You plow, you got to go to Duncan. You have to go to Duncan. Get a munchkin. Okay. All right. But we don't do that. We don't do we that. Got, we got slushy snow blowers. Yeah. <laughs> hey, so look who we got today. Come on. Who is this? This is Keith Liston. I knew that. You did? Yes, I did. Well, why'd you ask me? Because I just <laughs> kind of pumped the guy up, man. He's right. so excited to be All on right. the show today. He's with Liston Design Build. Hello there, Keith. How are Hi, you, Keith. sir? Good afternoon, guys. Welcome aboard. Well, thank you. Yeah. Happy to be on. Nice. Happy snowy. Happy snowy day. <laughs> do you have snow where you are? Do you have snow? We do not have snow. We just got our first snow on uh, Wednesday of last week, and it was uh, a mere inch or two. So we've we've been pretty lucky. Perfect. Wow. What's the temperature like? You're in St. Louis. Uh, today, uh, mid forties. Nice. All right, I can live with yeah, that. We- I can live with that much. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We've, we've had a very mild winter thus far. I, we're going to get down to the single digits over the weekend. But, you know, oh. old man winter, making sure we understand that it is winter time. So Yeah, yeah I'm not going to let you get off uh, yeah. scot-free for the whole winter. That's right. No. So tell us a little bit about what you do. What is uh, what is the design build? So we, um, we are a, uh, a design build remodeling company. Uh, we've been around since uh, my dad started our business in 1984. Uh, oh, I joined cool. in 1986, so we've been around a while. Nice. Um, evolved from when my dad started the business. Um, it was uh, no job too small. It was just him, and um, it, you know, evolved into uh, doing bigger projects. Once once I got involved, uh, I would say. The majority of our work is going to be kitchen and bath remodels, uh, basement mm. finishes, uh, nice. room additions, and, and outdoor spaces. So some pretty, um, you know, typical remodeling projects. I think, honestly, I like basement renovations the best. Hmm. I do. Really? Yeah. How come? Because I think they, I think they can become so different. They can always be different, just because of the appliances you're going to put into it. And either you're going to do a rug or a floor or the lighting. Mm -hmm. And it's just, you know, whatever you want to make it. If it's a real comfortable room or if it's just going to be a playroom for the kids or it's going to be the man cave or the woman cave. I think I find find a lot of excitement in that. See, to me, I feel like there's a lot of challenges in a basement. You know, if you're going to add a bathroom, there's that challenge. If you've got ductwork in there, there's that challenge. What do you think, Keith? Well, everyone has uh, the similar challenges. There's always some structural items that you have to work around, duct work you have to work around. Uh, but you know, we we love basements as well because they're predictable. So you're not you're not really opening anything up to to uncover or to discover surprises. So everything's pretty much right in front of you. You can mm-hmm. always uh, make the space work with you. You know, depending on what the budget is and and how much effort you want to put into the best location for the bathroom. Most times you can put it wherever you want. It's just, what's it going to take to get it there? Right. Uh, yep. And, and really they're, they're adaptive spaces, which, you know, we've had a ton of calls uh, since this pandemic started because people need to spread out and want, want uh, need, need more, more space to get their own private office or, you know, you can do a, a home theater, you can do a, a lower level, entertaining bar, um, a spare bedroom. I mean, it's just, there's a lot of things you can do down there that, that you wouldn't do upstairs because you still yeah. need you know, all your typical functional spaces to live. Right. Yeah, that's why I like them. And I think during the pandemic, everybody needs a bar. Yeah. <laughs> and I think it's a good thing to add right now. Or <laughs> That and home office. 
Or a <laughs> hole in a wall where you can hide your booze. Right. There you go. Oh. <laughs> so just explain to our listeners what it means by design build. So, you know, the you know, other other common uh, terms are like, like architect or draftsman. So where does design build come in? Well, in our, with us, so we have, uh, we have uh, interior, we have designers on staff um, and it's, it's all about being a center point of contact for a prospective um, homeowner. So you're not going outside of the, so the contractor basically brings in all of the, the design expertise and they're the center point throughout the project. So if, if you're, you're not having any uh, finger pointing throughout the project where the architect may design one thing and as, a, as the contractor, you can, you know, there, are, there have been situations where you tell your homeowner, well, the architect drew this up, I can't do anything about it. And so there, you know, it tends to be, there's a potential for some finger pointing and um, we just think it's, it's uh, uh, the nothing gets lost in translation or in communication between all the different parties. So I like my clients coming and coming, coming to me and, and, and I'm the one that gets to field all those questions and, and give them the advice, you know, not only during the design, but, you know, through the, through the production as well. Do you hire your own car, uh, architect or is it the whole more that's hired the architect and you work with them usually? So, so work. Uh, so if an architect is needed, uh, we hire the architect. So they basically come in just as my electrical contractor will. So they're yeah, just so enough. you know them. You know them. Yeah. Good. Correct. That's great. Yep. One big happy family. That's the way you want it. That's great. They know you. You know them. And you know how to work together. Right? Yep. Correct. Nice. Win-win. Win-win. So you guys design it and then execute it. That's correct. Yeah. So that's that's a great that's a great service for sure. So what are some of the uh, the cool things that you're seeing right now in in home design? What's what's the hot what's the hot area? Well, we typically um, I would say before the pandemic uh, set in, I would say ten to fifteen percent of our projects have been outdoor spaces. Okay. So prior to that. It's been kitchens, baths, lower levels, and additions. Once in a while, we would get an outdoor project, but I would say starting in probably May, once people got um, over the the stress of of COVID and, and everything, when the phones started ringing again, I would say sixty percent of our calls were for outdoor spaces. Yeah, and yeah. Um, which which was you know surprising at first, but when the you know, we would get, we would field some calls and the girls would bring me another job lead. And it was, uh, you know, the running joke was, let me guess, it's an outdoor space. Uh, <laughs> so that's, you know, and I, I think, you know, the, the, the big term right now for, for that, the kind of the, the, the terminology uh, biophilic designs is kind of the hot term right now. And I think we've all, everyone's, I heard somebody call it nesting where you, you know everybody's at home and they're prepping their house and they want to do yeah. stuff to their homes and mm -hmm. because they're all we all realize we're going to spend more time there um but the the i read an art a, a few articles that have mentioned biophilic designs and i had never heard of that terminology before but it, it just yeah, exactly. really it's connecting nature um you know where natural elements are incorporated into the spaces with lots of natural light some some plants and greenery and reclaim wood and just all nice. those um, kind of warm, warm features uh, to connect to the outdoors. Yeah. Reclaim wood is big now. Mm, very, very big. Reclaim wood walls. Seeing mm -hmm. that a lot. A lot of accent type yep, stuff. Yeah. 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 Yep. So what are some of the uh, outdoor uh, spaces that you, you guys design? Is it mostly like uh, fire pits and, and patios or is it decks? What is it? Yeah, we don't do many of the hardscapes. Uh, okay. You know, so fire pits, those types of things aren't really us. But if there's a structure involved, um, you know, it could be a, it could be a covered porch, it could be a screen porch. I know with those areas, we we're, we're doing um, either outdoor fire places, um, mm. you know, that are built in, and uh, some are 
uh, wood burning fireplaces. Some are, are going to be a, a gas fireplace. Um, also doing some infrared heaters. Uh, mm. speak, speaking selfishly, we're doing one of those projects on my own house, and we're going to do some nice. infrared heaters just to extend that time when you when you can use it. Right. Um, but you know, some outdoor kitchens, which ha- hasn't really been a big uh, a big project for us, but. Yeah. You know, opportunity um, has presented or presented it to us, so we're doing more of those types of, of projects also. Nice. So, what is the infrared heater? What is what is that? So, there's two types, and on the commercial setting, they'll they'll use gas a lot, but but that just isn't really practical for um, for us or for any of our projects. But um, it's you can get wall mounted, um, you know, heaters that that you know can be directional. Uh, to to the the living space or the outdoor mm-hmm. space, uh, we've done some that are recessed up in the ceiling, so they they mm-hmm. draw some amps. I think you need a fifty amp uh, breaker f- to to serve the, a typical uh, porch. But wow, uh, you know they're they're nice. It's just like if you I know I don't know if any of your any of your audience goes to Top Golf, but you go to Top Golf and you can be outside when it's twenty degrees out or 25, 30 degrees because you have those heaters on that. Make yeah. it more enjoyable. Yeah. Right. Huh. Nice. That's what I need. Exactly what you need. Yeah. I have a screen in porch and my wife and I live out there, you know, as soon as the weather warms up and we have blankets and, and everything else for when it starts to cool down. And it's always like, oh, I don't want to give it up. I don't want to give it up. So we had talked about the heating, some sort of like one of those um it was like tall lamps. They look like tall lamps that, like you said, I think are gas heaters and stuff. Oh, yeah. We were thinking about that, but you know, maybe the infrared heater is the way to go. I don't know. You got a TV out there? I do. Well, we have a TV that we bring out there. Oh, okay. So, yeah, sit there and watch yeah. TV. It's great. Love it. Yeah, those, those propane uh, heaters are great too. I mean, they, they? They, yeah. they definitely put off a lot of heat, and you know, it's got to have proper ventilation, of course. Sure. Yeah, it's a screen and porch. So we when we were in the middle of the whole COVID thing, those were a hot item and they were hard to get because restaurants were trying to get them for the winter, you know, uh, all, yeah. all up and down. Yeah. So they were you know, trying to do the outdoor dining and keeping people warm when the weather changed. So I think they're OK with those now. I, I mat- Like materials. Are you having a problem with materials, getting them certain materials? Not much. I mean, appliances are, are have, have been the most noticeable. Um, yep. That we certainly have had some uh, client play, place in order for light fixtures and you know those types of things. Uh, but it's that's been a little spotty. Hasn't been consistent. But um, appliances have been the biggest challenge. Yeah, they are here too. Uh, pressure treated material, decking, that sort of thing was real tough right. for us here that too. Is- yeah, yeah. Uh, we've had to be flexible. It's getting expensive, dude. Yeah, it's getting expensive. Yeah, you, know, you try to explain to the customer this is the price today. <laughs> I can't tell you what's going to be next yeah, week. Yeah, exactly. Because it, it it can change week to week. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think they thought it. Uh, I uh, had my lumber salesman say that I guess the the, the number of um, building permits that are out there that have been applied for um, there isn't enough lumber to to cover those. Wow, you know, there's really? a ten percent gap between them. So that. Tells me lumber prices aren't going to go down anytime soon. No, <laughs> no, no. I mean, once they get us used to the higher prices, they just leave them there. So, Keith, get into kitchens right now. What do you, what kind of countertops do you like? What's the demand of the countertop that you are you are they asking for? I would say seventy five percent of the time we're going to use a, a quartz product. Yeah, uh, you know, there's there you know there's a dozen really good manufacturers out there for that, but the rest is going to be a natural stone. Natural stove. Yep. Yeah. What granite. about sinks? Uh, um, still stainless steel. I mean, the farmhouse sinks are, I don't know if they've run their course, but, uh, you know, they seem to be trendy for a while. But, um, you know, really a undermount stainless steel sink is, you know, still going to be the most the most common. Yep. More um, one size instead of the divider down the middle, everyone would rather have. The, I guess it's this generation i think the older generations like the divider because they're used to hand washing some of the items so they like right. the divider. But, um I, you know i would say stainless steel is still you know do some of the composite ones but um mm-hmm. if i had to put a number 50 percent, probably still stainless and then 
maybe a porcelain apron front sink uh, for the other 25 and maybe a composite for the, the last part of it. Mm, yeah. Yeah. We, we, we seem to be doing still more of the farm sinks out here. Yeah. They're still very popular. Yeah. Everybody likes that, that country feel out here still. So, which obviously, you know, is, is probably just a trend that's going to go away at some point. Um, and unfortunately that's a tough sink to replace if you, you know, that is true. it's trended out. So you're kind of stuck with it and you got to live with it. I mean, we, we do have, you know, some people that are going with the, um, the stainless farm sinks. So it kind of looks, you know, that, that farm feel, but it's kind of, you know, staying with traditional stainless at the same time. Do you guys deal a lot with those two or no? Not a lot. I, we've, we've, uh, we've done a, a few, but it's, it's, if you have a belt buckle, it usually that apron gets kind of scratched up easily. So yep. we try to steer someone, you know, steer in one way or the other, either do a, a porcelain or a composite apron mm -hmm. front, or if you like the stainless steel, just know that there, that's a possibility. Huh. Never would have thought about that. Hmm. I don't wear belt buckles. I don't wear belts. So. TMI. Yeah, TMI. <laughs> hey, I, I wasn't thinking about belt buckles. Oh, I, I do. Yeah, well, I, oh, I do. All right. I do. All right. Oh, yeah, yeah. So um, what, are the other, what are some of the other things that you see that you think might be trendy uh, in bathrooms? Let's say. Let's start there. Uh, bathrooms. Right now, I think the finish that's the hottest finish are, are going to be the brush brass or the brush gold. Isn't that um, crazy? That, yeah. 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 I actually had a, uh, an, an appointment with a client yesterday that that has polished or bright brass and they want to go back with bright brass because because they love it. So it just tells you that people are, you know, still about individual choices. And, yeah. mm -hmm. um, you know, chrome is timeless and it's going to be around forever and um, yeah. you know, you less of the oil rub bronze. But, you know, it doesn't mean we don't sell them. It's just um, each everyone has a has a different palette, which is what keeps guys like us in business. <laughs> right, well, absolutely. Yeah, it's funny, you know, you go into those bathrooms that were, you know, designed in the nineties, you know, with the with the brass and everything, and some people are like, just get rid of it. I don't want to see it anymore. And then now other people are starting to go are trending back toward it. So, you know, like they right. say everything kind of comes back around at some point. So Yeah. If, have you dealt with any have you dealt with any like modern modern kitchens like like almost like Star Trek kitchens, because I've seen a couple of them, and I I don't find them appealing at all. I just <laughs> yeah, I feel uh, like yeah. It, we are in the Midwest, so it's the the trends <laughs> that comes here to die. I think is what they say. Yeah, <laughs> uh, that's right. right? That's we, we've we've been out to the the builder show, and you, you see a lot of the with with kitchens specifically a lot of the mix of a traditional upper door and real contemporary lower or bottom, you know, base cabinets with, you know, uh, uh, slab fronts. And, and I it just, I never, I don't think that'll ever come to the, to the Midwest, but everything's still, I think that, that, uh, um, you know, that farmhouse, uh, modern farmhouse look is still popular shaker door styles and more, more traditional here than, than contemporary. That's for sure. Yep. Now, are you Good. are you dealing more with painted cabinets as well? Yes, I would say that's still going to be two thirds of the kitchens we do are going to be yeah. uh, painted. Yep. So you're going. You've seen a lot of whites with maybe a gray for a, for an island or a blue. I mean, do you guys get into the blues as well? We do. We do. Yeah. And, you know, we have a we really have a nice um, the way our staff is set up and with having designers we, that accompany clients to the showrooms and help design the space and, you know, maybe let them stretch those, um, you know, the customer's muscles a little bit on thinking outside the box to do something that's a little unique. And I know the, we've done quite a few islands that are that, you know, that Navy blue color with, you know, yeah. a more traditional, ex, you know, perimeter color. So, um, but yeah, they're, they've been fun. It, it gets people excited. Yeah, absolutely. So what are you seeing in flooring? Uh, start off, start off with kitchen, baths, basements. I mean, I know they're kind of different. So what what are you guys seeing as a trend? Well, I would say the the biggest trend now with uh, with our basement projects is going to be LVT flooring. Mm -hmm. uh, it's good stuff. It's a, 
it's a you know it looks great it performs well it's a it's at a good price point so i would say we do that more than anything in a, in a basement mm -hmm. uh, probably more more um, hardwood floor for for main level you know kitchens yeah um, especially you know we try to i know the designers always want to keep that flooring continuous throughout the main level because it just mm -hmm. connects the spaces and makes everything feel a little more spacious. Um, and then, uh, you know, bathrooms are going to be uh, probably porcelain tile instead of the, uh, you know, natural stone, just because you can get that look without the maintenance um, or the, the cost with, uh, with a natural stone product. So, I mean, tile is tile's fun because there's a, there, there's so many different, styles and designs and and um it's crazy you know, you your own space oh you know i i i don't typically go to the stores with my clients uh unfortunately i have gone to tile stores with my wife and man are there just so many different options and and you know designs and everything you can spend hours there oh well, there's no question i you know it's yeah. and which is which is you know fortunately we have the the, the ladies that can go with them and and try to narrow that down um, because it is, it can be overwhelming whether it's a tile store or a plumbing supply house because they don't, they don't know where to start. Right. No, you're absolutely right. I mean, you know, somebody walks in and if they don't have a already an idea in their head or a vision, you know, it's going to be a long day for, mm. for everybody. Yeah. I mean, we, we've had clients that are, that are so nervous going into that day where, because they don't know how they're going to be able to make all these decisions and, in a four hour time period. And, you know, you just, you just go through it, you know, just like the old joke, how do you eat an elephant? Just one bite at a time. So you should the <laughs> designer start with probably the biggest, the biggest piece of the, you know, the kitchen is going to be, is going to be the bat is going to be the cabinets. You know, of course right. you're, you're going to want to know what the appliance package that they're going to want because that will affect the design of it. But, um, you know, and just take it, you know, piece by piece and, it's nice to have someone there to, that can um, assure the client that, yeah, this is all going to work together. Although you're picking everything separately, you know, the, the designer has, has the, a vision in mind and, you know, a lot of it's based on obviously what, what works together, but also some inspiration photos, you know, Pinterest and house and um, mm -hmm. all those, all those that has gone a long way to, for, for us to get inside of a client's head. I know. I, I absolutely love house. Um, I think it's great. I love the fact that they can create the idea book and share it with you and write notes underneath all the pictures and stuff. It's just, it's very, very helpful. So, you know, HGTV may not always be our friend, but I know house is <laughs> really helpful. Um, but yeah, yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. yeah. So what about, um, what about, uh, tile in the bathroom like as far as showers go and stuff are you seeing still keep it classic and go subway or are you seeing more of the larger tiles yeah it's mostly i, I you know we still do some some subway tiles mm -hmm. uh, you know that it gets a little busy to to get too crazy with uh with the field tile you can always get something interesting with with your recessed niche or you know the stella that goes around the perimeter Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But yeah, certainly bigger tiles. We we like to use what we call a dime joint on where the the tiles come together, so that you know, like grout joint is relatively minimal because none of our clients like the grout. And yeah. yeah, so it's it's big bigger tiles. Not a you know sometimes it's a straight lay pattern, sometimes it's a staggered pattern. So it's just um, you know just uh, depending on what what. What appeals to them? Yeah. I did one bathroom and it was, uh, I think it was two feet by eight feet, the, the tile. It was unbelievable. Oh, wow. I never see it. Was that yeah. Stephanie's? Yeah. 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 Stephanie's, yeah. Right? right around the corner here. Yeah. 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 It looked really cool when it was done, but it was like, oh my gosh, how are we going to get these installed and stay? And, you know, but yeah, it looked really cool. It looked really cool. They had very, very minimal grout lines, as you can imagine, when the tile so large, you know. Yeah. yeah, we're working with someone now that, that has two foot by four foot tiles. So those those are the biggest that we will use. So that'll, that'll be interesting. So yeah. heavy. 
Very it's heavy. So heavy. Yeah, we got to go to the third floor, put the bathroom. In. <laughs> yeah, I'm loving life then. Oh my god, that was second floor too. Those that tiles. was second floor that tiles. Yes, those, yes, that was nuts. Luckily, we have laborers. Well, that that design, the the large tile design, is big in is big in Europe. Uh, it was big in it's big in South Africa when I was out there. All the bathrooms that I saw, all the the hmm. modern uh, hotels, they all had the the large tile. Yeah, no grout, very you know thin seam. Um, saw a lot of that, but I saw more, more dark tile, not, not really. Yeah. It was more earth, hmm. like earth or to dark, like, like rustic or black tile is what I saw. Interesting. Yeah. Keith, you still dealing with a lot of white tile though, or, uh, more for a backsplash, I think for mm-hmm. as far as the subway tile goes. Um, mm-hmm. but generally they're going to be, you know, maybe uh, this particular bathroom does have a, uh, with the. 24 by 48 tiles that is going to be uh, like a matte finish or mm-hmm. yeah, matte finish. And it's a, it's a darker uh, smoky gray, brown gray type color. Mm-hmm. Um, but I would say most of the bathrooms are more of those natural tones. So it might be, you know, a, a, a taupe color or, you know, some gray, mm-hmm. obviously the tiles aren't solid colors or some sort of a pattern to them, but Yep. Uh, yep. You know, nothing real bright. It's just all earth and tones, which I, you know, is is almost almost a hundred percent on our bathrooms. Mm. Now, are you seeing uh, more tubs going away, or do you always highly recommend they keep the tub? Well, we the advice we give our clients is if if you want a big shower, which is what someone's going to use probably seventy five percent of the time at minimum. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Um, you know that sometimes you have to sacrifice the tub, and you know we we advise at least make sure you have a tub in the house someplace because whether you need it, the next buyer is going to want a tub. Um, mm-hmm. They have kids and, and that sort of stuff, so people still love the the look of the freestanding tubs, and whether they use them or not, if they have a a, a space for it, they're gonna they're gonna keep that. Um, so usually the tubs you only go away if um, you know, if they, if they want to expand that shower and make it a little bigger. Yeah. It's funny. I usually see that they keep it in the guest bath, but they typically will get rid of it out of the, out of the master bath. You know, like you said, unless you have enough room for a freestanding, um, do you do a lot with uh, jet tubs as well? Jacuzzis mm-hmm. or. Yeah, not much, not much at all. If we, mm-hmm. if we do a tub, it's going to be a bubble jet. So, mm-hmm. you know, we're, pushes air it doesn't recirculate any of the any of the uh water which you know the old the old style jacuzzis that would suck the water back in you know back into the pipes and yeah and then basically squirt it back out you know water stays in there and gets a little stale and mm-hmm. it'll it rancid if, if you the don't bacteria. Use it yeah bacteria no good yeah but those the air air to air jets are are really phenomenal they I don't know how it, it's there's some sort of an internal uh, timer on the blower because once it drains, it waits about first time we put one in and we were testing everything out and yep, it bubbles are working. It looks great. And, and it's all drained and you kind of walk away. And next thing you know, the blower turns on 15 minutes later and purges all the water that's, that's in those pinholes. Oh, um, so it was a kind of a weird surprise. Wow. <laughs> Interesting. Cool. Have you seen the uh, the uh, jet tub that actually gets connected to your phone, and that if you're playing music, the pulsing of the the beat of the music actually does the jets? Really, I yeah. have not. Yeah, yeah, yeah not done. that's pretty. That's pretty cool. <laughs> How about the uh, exhaust fans with the Bluetooth, where it has speakers and stuff? People can listen to their music. You guys get into any of that stuff? We haven't done that. Yeah, yeah. There's some cool things out there, but. In my opinion, it's only there to break. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know to get, go with the stuff that we're used to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Those are conversation pieces. Come on and look at my bathroom. That's not a filter. That's a speaker. <laughs> yeah. Well, people do like their gadgets. Yes, they love they their do. gadgets. Yes, yeah, they no, do. I'm kidding. Yeah. Do you still do a lot of the body jets and stuff in showers, or you see that going away? I would say... You know, maybe ten percent of the time. Yeah, and, and it usually is driven by a client that absolutely has to have one. And yeah. I don't know that. Um, you know, at least the clients that we've had, I don't know that they 
that they absolutely love it after they've you after they've had it installed. I, I just don't know that they're all that they're cracked up to be. But again, that's what makes the world go round. If if somebody wants to feel like they're going through a car wash, then you know, <laughs> I'll, I'll do it for them. Nice, nice. Well, I mean, you also have to have really good water pressure in your house in order to be able to pull that off. Yeah, which I try to explain to some people too. I'm like, how's your water pressure? They're like, terrible. I'm like, then don't even bother, you know? And ideally you want to get a three quarter inch pipe up to it too, so that there's more water going through it. And that's not always easy or able to be done. So yeah, we, we try to stay away from that. Do you ever ask your customer, have you ever tried a a, a shower like that? No, I've never, I've never asked them that question. Why, why do you want that? Yeah. Just, I'm just just curious because it looks good. Well, you're going to put all this money into it. And then all of a sudden you try it and you were like, Ow, that water hurts my boobs. I can't do that. That's not going to work for me. You know what I mean? It's just, I think I do, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm, you know, I do think, I'm sorry. I do think clients get, our clients get a lot of inspiration ideas. And now that no one's traveling, this doesn't happen. But you go to a nice hotel, the bathrooms are usually pretty decked out. And right. that's where a lot of the the... Uh, the inspiration comes from when, when clients give us yeah. a call. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's very true. Cause there's a lot of times you'll be sitting there talking to the customers and the wife goes, no, no, you remember that bathroom in, you know, Myrtle beach. And it's like, Oh yeah, yeah. That's what we want. <laughs> so yeah, you're absolutely right. Yeah. Take a picture of it. Yeah. Take a picture. Cause I did, I took care. I took pictures of all the, it's going to sound kinky, but when I was traveling, you know, across the world, I would take pictures of the bathrooms because of like what we talked about before the tile, not so much the fixtures, but mm-hmm. like the tile and the layout, mm-hmm. a lot of just a lot of glass layout, you know, glass doors or just open that open glass. It, it was weird. I mean, some of it was, but and some of it really worked, you know, mm-hmm. like that whole, I walked into a bathroom that had the toilet, the sink in it and the shower. And it was a big room and you just turn the shower on and the water would just drain to the drain, and then you could use the, you know, there was no curtain. It was just yeah. like a big bathroom with all tile. Yeah. The whole thing was tile. Huh. I wasn't crazy about the concept, but it worked. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. We get some of those people that don't want curbs in their shower or anything else. You know, you give them a linear drain and everything pitches away. Yeah. Yeah. So. Okay. How about how about ADA compliant bathrooms? You guys get into those too? Um, we do. I mean, I'm, you know, certified aging in place specialist. It just means you go through the classes, but, yeah. um, you know, it, it's, uh, we, I, I thought that it would be a, a bigger, um, opportunity for, for bathroom projects, but it's, it hasn't proven to be that. Um, uh, but, you know, I think, I think it makes sense that it's tough to bring that up but if they don't bring it to you and say, we should, we should, we want to consider aging in place. and um, then it's an easy conversation, but you know, it's sometimes it's a little sensitive to make people realize, Hey, we're, you know, we're all getting older and you can <laughs> yeah. still have it look great, but be, uh, you know, be easier to use in the future as well. Right. Right. No, yeah. good point. Lot, lot to contend with. Absolutely. So if somebody's getting ready to do a kitchen project, bathroom project, basement project. What uh, advice do you give them? Well, I would say, uh, talk to uh, family, friends, uh, people you know that have had their project remodeled. Um, you know, invite those that you know. And I don't know that I would ever tell somebody you, you have to get three bids. Um, mm-hmm. You know, the way that the way that the design build works, you're really picking the contractor based on who you are confident in, who you trust, and who you think is going to do a good job for you. Right. So it, it's. You know, that, that's that's who our clientele is. And mm-hmm. it's more about who do you, you know, you're going to, you're always going to hit those bumps in the road on our remodeling project. And, you know, is the, can, can you, can you work with this person? Um, so I would say, you know, you ask around, you do your homework, you know, with all the different online review sites that are out there, it's, it's easy to get information on, on a contractor and, mm-hmm. um, you know, really just find someone that, that you'd like to work with and, and go from there. All right, that's good advice. So, uh, keeping names out of it and everything else. Any horror stories you want to share? Not really. Um, <laughs> gosh, we've been doing it He's for a long horror. time, and you know, some of it, some of it is uh, the, the horror stories are are um, you know self inflicting. You know, the, the stuff that you do that kind of turns things south. But yeah, um, 
you know, we've, we've really been fortunate to, to work for some really good people. And, um, you know, like I said, you, 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 you are going to have those, those moments. We have a project today where we're take, where it's a full remodel or a um, whole house remodel. And Mm -hmm. we're taking the center bearing roof, uh, wall out of the middle of the house and and we're going to span everything with with trusses that have to be have to be um, navigated up inside the existing ceiling line and the trusses were ordered wrong uh, you know oh. someone one of my guys gave a bad measurement and you know that's that stuff's going to happen and you just have to sure. handle it well and, and assure them that hey it's all going to be fine we're going to take care of it and yeah um, you know at the end of the day if you have somebody that has the the long long-term vision of their business that they're going to be here, uh, you know, in the next 10 or 20 years, then, you know, they're going to make it right and understand that those things are going to happen. Absolutely. Yeah. And the people are nicer out, out there yeah. in the Midwest. Yeah, they are. They're not like it's the true. Northern people. They're all yeah. uptight over here. All uptight. <laughs> they're a little uptight here. Yeah. A little stressful. Well, they, usually, they, give us one, they, they, they give us one break. Anything after that, then you, then you're on borrowed time. Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. All right. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> well, Keith, it was great to have you on the show. Really appreciate it. How do people find you? Uh, you can, uh, we're in St. Louis area. So, uh, Liston, Liston design build, uh, com is our website and all our social media stuff is all there. So, um, great. yeah, it's been, it's been fun. I, I enjoyed it. Thanks. Keith. Great. Absolutely. Yeah. You on TikTok? Uh, no. <laughs> okay. All right. We just, we'll is that, are those yeah, the breath just... that you put in your pocket? Yeah. Pretty yeah, yeah, much. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> yeah. You're not missing much right now. No, no. We're all old school. Yeah. Uh, so thank you very much for joining us. We really appreciate it. All right. Sounds good, guys. Thanks. Thank You're you, welcome. Dude. And uh, for next week, just going to be you and me, buddy. It is. Yeah. Just you and me. We don't have any uh, guests next week, but we do want to get back. Uh, we do want to get in touch with Tiffany. Uh, who sent us an email, some pictures. She's from the Shrewsbury area in Massachusetts. Okay. And uh, we will definitely get back to her next week. Uh, awesome. The answers to her questions. Okay. All right. All righty. Good to see you. All right. Happy, happy shoveling. Happy shoveling. There you go. <laughs> All right, everyone. We'll see you next week. All right. Bye. See you. Bye.